this is Tally Mouse. Whoa, now let's just pause right here and I'll explain what we're looking at. I'm currently wearing the Pimax Crystal with a hand tracking module installed and eye tracking enabled. Today we're going to be analysing the perceived horizontal field of view of the Pimax Crystal, looking at leap motion hand tracking within Digital Combat Simulator and also demonstrating dynamic foveated rendering using quad views and the eye tracking capabilities of the Pimax Crystal. I'm sat in the cockpit of an F-18 on the deck of the USS Abraham Lincoln and, sadly, the 16th President of the United States did not live long enough to see the aircraft carrier launch in 1988. I'm using OpenXR Toolkit, Pimax XR, QuadViews and QuadViews Companion. I've placed links to these apps in the description below. The image in the middle of the screen is what is being projected into my left eye and represents 2880 by 2880 pixels, giving a total of 8.3 megapixels per eye. Of course, if you're viewing this in 4K, then the image has been downscaled to a height of 2160 pixels, so you will not be seeing the same level of detail as I can see in the headset. You can see a virtual representation of my real hands located centrally just in front of the upfront controller and the center line between them represents the center of my stereoscopic vision. The field of view of both eyes with stereo overlap would be somewhat similar to this. And in the headset, without moving my head, I can clearly see from the base of the joystick to well above the canopy arch, while experiencing the side-to-side -side field of view you can see here. My F-18 Simpit is an exact geometric replica of an actual F-18 cockpit so I can reach out with my virtual fingers to interact with buttons and dials as they touch the corresponding buttons in the cockpit, as we will see later on. This is important, as it is verification that the scale and proportion of my virtual cockpit precisely matches my real-world simpit, and by extension, the virtual field of view and my real-world field of view also match. You'll notice on the port side of the canopy structure, there are eight bolt heads visible. We can use these as a geometric guide against the F-18 model's orthographic top view, seen here being flown by the Prince of Wales, to determine our perceived field of view within the headset. Reconstructing the left eye field of view upon a plan view of the F-18 cockpit permits us to mirror these angles for the right eye, and then simply measure the angle between the two outer extents of our field of view. As you can see, our perceived field of view is 118 degrees. Pimax's website specifies the crystal's field of view to be 125 degrees, and we have come close to this measurement. We need to consider, however, that different people will experience different fields of view based upon the geometry of their face and eyes. If your eyes are very close to the lenses, you will naturally perceive a higher field of view than if you have deep-set eyes that are further away from the lenses as a result of the physics of optics. Neanderthals beware. The crystal ships with a thin face foam, yet I chose to replace that for a thicker face foam so that the headset fit my face more comfortably. My eyes are deeper set than the average, so I am not surprised that my perceived field of view is slightly less than that specified by Pimax. So enough of the still images, let's take a look at the ultra-leap hand tracking. Ready all day, ready all day. Four ship supersonic combat, I on port side. But let's check out the flyby first. While I'm waiting for the inertial navigation system to align, you can see my hands are just resting on my knees, so I'll go ahead and prepare the DDIs for their launch configuration. I can just reach out and press the buttons because they are actually there. This really aids immersion. I'm 
I'm also going to go ahead and set up my FF. ILS on, even though it's a little premature. TACAN to 2-0 Yankee and on. Data link on and data link on again, the first time for link 4 and the second time for link 16. I'm also going to set up channel 2 to 251, as I will be talking to a refueling tanker later on, hence the Yankee in the TACAN and I will set channel 3 to 127.5 for my communications with the carrier when I return. inside the HMD, I cannot even tell that a major proportion of the image is being rendered at a very low resolution, because the super sampled region is following my gaze. That major reduction in load on my GPU can now go into increasing quality settings in DCS, such that everything is effectively on maximum. Due to the super sampling in the foveate region, I can also turn off MSAA completely. I saw the command to advance through my right eye, just in case you were wondering. Signal to retract my launch bar. Now time to perform a controls wipeout and throttle up to full mill power. And salute. I'm properly trimmed for takeoff so I can keep my hands off the controls. was achieving around 80 frames per second. Now as I'm climbing through the clouds, that's now touching 95. The first thing I notice as I come through the clouds is that because of the super sampling in the foveate region, I now don't have the classic shimmering or oscillation of the clouds at a distance. That's completely gone and they're incredibly crisp and look perfect.
flight group, Aerial 1, Rick Pants 1. We see you at our 3 o'clock at 12 miles. Use TACAN 20 Yankee for tanker approach. Maintain 350 knots and climb to 22500. That's flight level 225. See you soon. I've just been contacted by one of the two typhoons that are escorting a tanker out of Mount Pleasant in the Falklands and I am going to rendezvous with them and refuel. As I had a little too much speed coming into the turn prior to rendezvous, I am going to perform an S-turn while I have my speed brake deployed, so I take a longer path through the air compared to my direct line distance to the tanker, enabling me to slow down. As I approach the drogue for refuel, the clarity provided by the super sampling in the phobic region makes it so much easier to change distance and allows for a very, very comfortable, immediate and high quality connection. Keeping the wing pod between the top of the hood glass and the bottom of the canopy arch is the perfect position to be able to pulse on the throttle to maintain position with a small amount of advanced slack in the drogue line until you can take on a full load of fuel. In conclusion, you can use dynamic foveated rendering to do one of two things. You can use the saved GPU load to increase your quality settings up to the maximum or get away with using an earlier generation GPU, but still manage to maintain high quality visual settings. Thank you for joining me and watching all the way to the end. If you found this content useful, please subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be alerted of any new content when it comes.